Dr. Weich Coleman, this is Cataract Basics video four of six. This is nucleus extraction. This one's kind of long. Some of the other ones we've been a little bit pressed for time. I've talked through them quickly. With the nucleus, uh, it's, it's about 80 to 85 seconds on average per nucleus removal, just under a minute and a half. Uh, I'll be talking not necessarily in the order of what you're seeing on the screen, but in general about the concepts that you're going to see played over and over. So if you hadn't seen the other videos, this is basically a day where I took 10 random cases that were non-laser standard vanilla cases, and I uh, cut them up and showed just the specific portions. So this is uh, nucleus removal, and my preferred method is divide and conquer, a modified divide and conquer. That second instrument is the Connor wand. I think it's an underused instrument. It's by far my favorite. I've used several different types they always seem to seem to have a bend in them somewhere that it's not really necessary. So I like a Connor. You can reach all the way across the eye. It's really safe. It's got a rounded tip. It's hard to puncture the capsule using the Connor wand. Of course, anything's possible. And if I do it again, it won't be the uh, first time. But uh, generally, it's a great instrument. I really like it. Very, very versatile. You can do a whole bunch of things with it. So one of the things I like to point out is just the entry into the eye. The problem I've had in the past is a little small endothelial tear at the main surgical wound. And I think that comes from the uh, bevel angle as you go into the main wound. You really want to be pointed down a little bit so you don't grab endothelium and tear it off as, the, as you're going in with the FACO. So I'm going to sculpt first. And I think it's useful always to remember that the uh, FACO tip is, depending on what size, you, what FACO machine you use, is about 1 to 1.2 millimeters. And a lens is almost always greater than three millimeters thick. So you basically have three passes sculpting with, with pretty much impunity. It's going to be difficult to rupture a capsule with three full thickness passes in sculpt. So I see people very, being real timid on the first pass or the second pass. I think after the third pass is the time to be timid and make sure you don't groove through the bag. But in the first couple of passes, you know, probably the first three, you can really be aggressive and take a full thickness bite of it, and that'll save you some time. You can always tell our fellows and the residents at LSU that there's only a couple of places that you can really significantly reduce your surgical time. You can't really make incisions much faster. You can't put lenses in much faster. But you can, you can sure uh, vary the amount of time it takes to get the nucleus out and the cortex out. You know, that could be 30 minutes or it could be two minutes, and that's really where most of your time efficiency is going to come from is moving faster with that. So once we've sculpted three grooves, then we want to sort of be careful. We want to be really light on the foot. We want to make sure that we don't go too deep. We, don't want, we want to make sure that we don't go too equatorial, too far away from the center, because that's when you start to get unpredictable things happening. It's also very important when you begin sculpting to make sure that you're actually in sculpt mode. A lot of times the pedal will get uh, accidentally touched. It will click to quad, and you won't notice until you get in the eye, and things are very erratic and unpredictable. If that happens, you're probably in quad, uh, and that's a potential for a problem. So, you know, it's really nice on the Ingenuity display because that's sort of heads up right in front of you, almost like an instrument panel in an airplane uh, where you have all the information right in your field of view. You can see that it's in quad without having to turn and look at the machine. So I think that's a big advantage of the Ingenuity. So in general, the steps that I use in a divide and conquer is once I've sculpted, and I apologize to everybody that you're watching something happen and I'm talking about something different, but we'll catch up towards the end, so bear with me. And come back and watch it again if you want to see the steps in more detail. So it's a little bit smaller pupil. So in this time, I'm going to try to talk real time up to the point of the crack. So we'll do a sculpt. There's one. There's two. And there's three. And those were basically full thickness passes. I'm not even being careful until I'm at the fourth pass. And at the fourth pass... It doesn't have to be extremely deep. You just have to get your instruments at the very bottom of it. So the Connor's going to the very bottom as far distal as I can take it for the first portion of the crack. And the FACO is coming in behind it. So the Connor in the initial portion of the crack, in my view, should be the deeper of the two instruments and the sharp FACO tip should be slightly shallower. Just a little bit more shallow. And that allows you to uh, get a good crack. And if you're if you're midway through the nucleus, it just sort of flexes that little portion that's still remaining at the just anterior to the back edge of the capsule. The lens will just sit there and flex. So you really have to get the instruments deep in order to pull it apart. And once you get it started, then you can wedge the Connor out into the crack. 
and get a little bit more mechanical advantage. The further equatorial you go, the more mechanical advantage you have. And you really want to make your groove straight up and down vertical right in the middle of the nucleus because you don't want to divide it two-thirds and a third. You want to divide it in, uh, you know, or a quarter and three quarters at the beginning of the case. You really want to divide it in half, and that just is determined by the location of your initial groove. And if you make that groove too wide and you don't have straight sides going vertically up and down, it's hard to have good mechanical advantage to get a clean crack. This is a little bit of a small pupil here, so I'm being careful and going to position zero, letting the, the uh, pressure in the eye basically get to zero before I come out with the, with the FACO, and that prevents iris prolapse. That's a great trick in people with IFAS. Uh, you know, go to position zero. You almost never want to use position zero, but that's one case where it's really useful if you have an iris that's trying to prolapse. So let's catch back up here. We've just grooved three times. The Connor goes deep. The FACO is pretty deep, but not quite as deep as the Connor. We don't want to puncture the bag. Now we're going proximal to the wound. We're reaching far equatorial to get a mechanical advantage with the Connor. Now the Connor lifts up. It reaches out and scoops. And we don't want to get in a big hurry to crack a quarter off at this point because we might accidentally crack like a sixth or an eighth. We really want to take it in clean quarters. So you can see this is almost a perfect quarter. And the reason for that is if we take it in, in smaller sections, it's just going to be more times going through that motion. So once the first hemi-nucleus is out, I'm going to engage the second hemi in a thick part of the nucleus, probably two-thirds distal from the surgical wound. Hopefully that makes sense to everybody. So not right in the middle, just a little bit further away from the main surgical wound. That way I can slide it back over towards me, slide it proximal to the main wound and then rotate it up into the anterior chamber. On the first half and the second half, when they're rotated in the anterior chamber, you should have them sitting up in a, in a position where you could just take a break and sit there for a minute, and they won't fall back into the bag. You want them canted up into the anterior chamber enough to where you can sit there stable, and you're not in a big hurry to try to crack a piece off or try to take some of it in quad. You can just sit there, get your instruments in a good position, and get a clean quarter cracked off. So again, the Connor goes deep. Now the Connor goes proximal, deep, and pretty equatorial. So we've got a clean crack. We're making sure that it's complete, that we can see open cap, or, you know, or capsule behind it, hopefully not open capsule. Now we're clacking off a clean quarter, and I think it's an advantage to have the instruments optically on top of each other when you're trying to crack off a quarter. And that means you want to have the, the FACO sitting directly on top of the Connor. You would think that the hemi-nucleus is angled up into the anterior chamber, so you would want them sort of staggered. You'd want the Connor to be more distal and the FACO to be more proximal, but I really like to have them optically right on top of each other, and I think that gets me a more clean quarter. Now, when you've still got a piece of nucleus that's in the capsular bag, that is giving you relative protection against rupturing the capsule accidentally. It can't come forward if it has something protecting it. And that protection goes down proportional to how much of the nucleus you've removed. So when you've taken the first quarter and you still got three quarters sitting in the bag, it's really hard for the capsule to come forward and accidentally make contact with the FACO tip, even if the chamber goes flat. By the way, foot position is key. We always want to be in at least position one. One, two, or three. We don't want to go to zero in these cases, except if you're trying to prevent iris prolapse when you're coming out. So always stay in at least position one at all times. But when we have three quarters of the nucleus still in the bag, we have, a, we have relative protection. It's very difficult for the capsule to come forward. When we only have a hemi-nucleus in the bag, it's still pretty good prote protection. It's hard for the capsule to come forward. But it's a little easier than when you had three quarters. When you get down to the last quarter, you need to be progressively more careful. So. In quad mode, when I'm thinking about how aggressive I'm going to be with the foot, how much phaco energy I'm going to use, and how fast I'm going to take that nucleus out, in general, the first quarter, I'm going to floor it. I'm going to take it as fast as I can take it. The second, I'm going to slow down a, a little bit, but probably still we're close to just flooring it and doing it very quickly and efficiently. Now the third quadrant, when it comes out, I'm being a little more careful there. And then the fourth is when we really got to slow down, bring it more anterior, be cognizant of the capsular bag, Hold our Connor deep to protect the bag, keep it from coming forward, um, and make sure that we don't rupture it. That's the time that we're at risk. So we can take the first three quarters pretty quickly, and then we want to slow down and be careful. That'll help, help with your efficiency 
If you're trying to move faster, you need to make sure that you, for the purpose of safety, are careful when it's necessary, but for the purpose of speed, when you're in a relatively safe position, that's when you need to take the opportunity to move a little bit faster and be a little bit more aggressive with your foot, especially on those uh, dense cataracts that take a little bit more energy to break up. That'll help you improve your surgical time. So here we go with our distal crack, proximal crack. I'm, I'm, I'm basically wiggling the conner out into the equatorial uh, nucleus. They're optically almost on top of each other. This is near a perfect quarter. That's exactly what I want. I'm going to rotate and scoop the next quarter up, engage it. I'm protecting a little bit with the conner, but I'm not that worried about the bag. If I need to tumble the nucleus around, I know the bag's going to have a tough time coming forward at this point. So I'm going to engage it two-thirds the way across. I'm going to let go with the FACO before I crack in most cases. I think I didn't really do it in that case. But ideally, I'm going to let go and scooch the FACO down. You know, that's not very good technical terms, but it's the best way to describe it in my view. You know, the, way, the way I think about it, I want to scooch it down. That way I crack a clean quarter off because I don't want to crack off like a sixth or an eighth and have a really big chunk still in the bag. It's more difficult to get it up. And that's going to force me to crack it again before I take the last piece. It's going to slow me down. So this is probably the uh, eighth or ninth case. We're getting pretty close to the end here. And this is a relatively small pupil. By the way, we use sugar cane on everybody. I think I made a note of that in the previous videos. That helps have good pupil dilation. And we, uh, My partner, Dr. Shelby, and I couldn't come up with a reason not to use sugar cane in every case. When we initially did it, we have come up with a reason now. My call doesn't work too good. So if you're doing an exchange, uh, a Yamani, you're going to need good pupil constriction. You know it. you got a planned vitrectomy. Probably use 1% lidocaine without epi in those cases so you can bring the pupil down if you need to. But I, in my view, you're going to need a lot less myocol myostat if you have a good dilation at the beginning in the majority of cases. Okay, so we're lifting it up. We're canning into the AC. We're getting those instruments to optically on top of each other to break off as clean of a quarter as we can. The second quarter comes up, and this technique works excellent through a, through a poorly dilated pupil. You can sort of deliver these lens fragments up, even if the pupil doesn't dilate beyond 2 or 3 millimeters in most cases, without using hooks or a value ring. Okay, so we're canning it up. We're breaking off a clean quarter, so now we have only one quarter remaining. And our, our level of aggression with our foot pedal is progressively decreasing now. So this is the last quarter. We're going to be pretty careful. And I would note at this point, when we're getting to the very end and we're getting out the last couple of pieces, it's pretty tempting always to just come back with the IA if there's a few little nuclear fragments left. And that's a good strategy in most cases. But as the cataract gets more dense, that strategy gets less and less valid because it can take a long time. It can be impossible in some cases with a very dense cataract to, to bring it into the IA tip. Um, even when you're pushing it in with the Connor wand. So that's the trick when you get the IA in. But now, for the purpose of efficiency, I try to get as many of those small nuclear fragments with the FACO tip as I possibly can. So that saves me a lot of time getting stuck and getting occluded with the eye. Centering eye, this is someone some with Sturgy Weather syndrome. This is a, a, a small uh, subconjunctival hemangioma that you can see uh, on the left side of the frame there. Been there his whole life. So. This one's not as clean as I would want it to be, but it's working fine. It looks like we're going to be left with a with an equal half. Now, I will say, when I try to engage this portion, that's probably the hardest move because every time you try to engage it and you don't succeed, you take a little piece, it becomes harder. So if I don't, if I'm not able to engage it in the first three tries, I'm going to rotate it and take it like I did the first hemi. So that's my rule. Three tries to bring it in the AC. If it doesn't work, I'm going to rotate it and take it like the first one. So stay tuned for the next video. Thanks for watching.